kind of interesting because uh, traveling with ESPN, I had an opportunity to follow a lot of the athletes around Owensboro area, especially in the motor city field. And Nicky always had something about him that you saw right here every week. He was just Nicky. And that's what made that young man such a talented young man. Now what we have here going in front of us are 69 uh, balloons, the reason for the number 69 in motorcycle racing. You have your number, his number was number 69. He only carried that number one time that he didn't carry the number, and that was the number one when he was number one in the world. Well, Nicky, a little blonde-headed kid out of Orangeboro, Kentucky. Grew up with Earl and Rose and everybody. Call him Magnificent Seven. He won the 600 AMA Championship a few years ago. I had an opportunity to go and talk with him. So I'm kind of nicknamed the Magnificent Seven for the simple reason that there's mom and dad, and you got five kids, but everybody in that family did something to help the next person in that family. And that's kind of interesting to see how that happens because this day and time, it doesn't really happen that way in much. And as we stand here tonight, his, his older brother Tommy is working with his mother Rose to get all the uh, things squared away so we can get him back in town. But Nicky's kind of an interesting guy. I followed him out in El Mirage, California one time and I wanted to find out what, uh, what made this kid tick. He went to a riders meeting. Now, all you guys that race, you go to drivers meetings, riders meetings, and everybody doesn't pay a bit of attention to what you're saying, except Nicky did. And at the end of the day, there was only one guy standing on top of the box, and that was Nicky. You're waving your hand back there. What's the problem? Mr. Say again. Mr. Mr. Feedback, okay. Who's running sound? You got it? Okay, I'll go back. So I kind of watched Nicky to see how he did things. And one thing after he came out of this meeting, this kid, he had war paint on him. Not literally. His mind was thinking about one thing, and that's riding that motorcycle. Not only riding, he wanted to win on that motorcycle. And he wanted to thump you if he had to to get to win on that motorcycle. He won Del Mar that day. And if you ever want to see what that look looked like with Nikki, there's two magazines that have been written, or two books that have been written about the Hayden family. One of them written by an Owensboro uh, writer named Danny May. He's got a book called the first, uh, the best fam, excuse me, the first family in racing. It's a good book. It's about Owensboro. Then you got another book out there that comes out of Europe. It's called From Moto From OWV, and this is from Owensboro Air Airport, to MotoGP saying start in here and winding up over there in Spain and all over the world and people know you and everything. Mickey, excuse me, Nikki and Tommy and Roger Lee hold some distinctions you'll never be able to get over. Number one, when they were flat track racing. Who's got my flat track? Right here. This is the flat track. For those of you not familiar with the sports, let me explain something to you. This is the flat track right here. Number 69, that'll be a flat track. Also, number 69, this is the, what they rode over in Europe. The 69 on the end, they go through the corners and back those motorcycles in, and they put their left foot down and use it kind of as an outrigger. When they went to Europe, those guys could not believe that the American rider, Nicky, could do that, because he'd run into the corner, and then everybody else would just be turning, and Nicky would be backing it in the corner and laying on his elbow and laying on his knee that low to the ground. Now you look at the ground right now and tell me how far you got to get down to land on that elbow and on that knee. Not so far for you. I've seen you before. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Looking good holding the balloon, man. I'm proud of you. But Nicky had something about him that he always worked with his brothers. They're the only family to ever finish first, second, and third in a professional motorcycle race. That was in Springfield, Illinois. Nikki won, Tommy was second, Roger Lee was third. The one dream that Nikki will not be able to get was there's short track racing, you got TT racing, and you got the miles, man. The miles are where it is. Well, Nikki's won short track, he's won TT, but he was going after the miles next weekend in Springfield, Illinois. But instead, they're going to have a moment of silence over there for him. Because they know that kid can ride a scooter just as good, if not better, than anybody that ever threw a leg over him. So, Nikki, I'm looking tomorrow 
there are going to be in Springfield, Illinois, there will be moments of silence. There will be moments of silence at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Today, NASCAR down in Charlotte, you know what those guys did? They all went into the pit area. They were closed today. They all went to the pit area, and they were talking about Nicky Hayden and what a cool kid he was and what a great guy he was. And the fact is, from Owensboro, Kentucky, and everybody's going, like, I didn't know motorcycle racers were out of Owensboro. Yeah, anything that goes flat, fast and turns left usually comes out of this part of the country. <laughs> That's right. I knew I'd get you going again there, too. All right. No, but it, for me, it's really neat to be able to stand up here and talk to my community. It's the first time I've really ever had a chance to do this. But I want to tell you what Nicky did for us also. He took us... When he started racing, he was so, so short, he had to stand on a box to take off on his motorcycle. Stand on a box, a milk carton. There's a term in motorsports called standing on a box. That means when you finish first, second, or third, there's boxes at different heights. You stand on the box you want. And to stand on the tall box is the biggest glory there is. You know something? Nikki took everybody here, kind of put his arm around us, jumped on a Honda motorcycle, and went to the top of the box. And he took all of us with him. Uh, yeah, he took you and me and everybody from Owensboro, Kentucky, can say we got a world champion. The kid's name's Nikki Hayden, and I went to school with him, or I used to date his girlfriend. <laughs> I didn't mean that last part. I'm sorry. I get a little excited here, you know. But Catherine, good seeing you. Congratulations to you, young lady. Got you know, got young lady of the year. How about that? Used to be her advisor in junior achievement. Debits on the left, credits on the right. We've fought that for four years. But anyway, Nikki takes people with him when he does something. When he when he wins an event. He'll go down and talk to kids and do things. Not just to do it, he'll do it because he likes it. And that's his personality. And he likes Owensboro, Kentucky, and that's his personality. You would be surprised in this crowd right now how many people that if you knew who they were, I don't know how to say that. I don't think you'd be screaming, or you probably would be. But I don't think most of the people would be screaming, there's some heavy hitters in the motorsporting world and some heavy hitters right now in the in the sporting world period that are standing around here. I spotted them. We're going to let them stay and enjoy themselves because they can come to Owensboro, Kentucky, and they can enjoy themselves without being bugged or everybody wants an autograph and all this kind of stuff. Here we go. Nikki lines up, going to... Spain gets a hold of Tommy. A little pressure on Nicky. He knows it. I told you about the look he had in his eyes. He looked like a, a, a what am I going to say here? A jet <laughs> fighter pilot. Put that on, buddy, and he's ready to go to war. Yeah, there you go. So he gets a hold of his brother Tommy and says, man, there's this kid from Spain that's really making it tough on me, and every time I get out and try to get a lead on the world championship, this little scooter will come and run right underneath me. So Tommy, who's the quietest guy in the world, wouldn't want to be in a barn with him on fire because you'd, you'd smell the smoke before he's got Tommy bother you. If you can get that book from OWB to MotoGP, and it is a good book. It's this thick. It's got photographs of this family from the very beginning. I mean from the beginning when these kids were this big. And when I say kids, I'm talking Jenny, the oldest girl. A lot of the boys said that she was the best motorcycle rider in the whole bunch. Huh? How about that, girls? Yeah. You ride a motorcycle, ma'am? You just hold the balloon. You're doing a good job there. Okay. okay. And then you had Tommy coming along. He was, he's the, the head guy with Monster Energy Drink right now in Europe. That's a pretty good job, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if he gets paid in pesos or what, but the kid's got money. I know that. A lot better than, you know, what we're saying here. And then you got Jenny. She's out in California or Washington State. She uh, went into the field of medicine and, and enjoys that, specializing in injuries you find on motorcycles. 
accidents. That's pretty smart to do that. But what I'm telling you, all these people took something that they loved, they shared it with their hometown, you and I, and they made us proud. You know, Nikki wins a race, buddy. I'll tell you what, you walk into Burger King with your chest out. Yeah, we bad. We won that race yesterday. You saw that, didn't you? Huh? Big Dipper, we're here. We got it, yeah. We got it. Yeah, we won that race yesterday. Meanwhile, you're sitting there changing, scratching your foot with your sock and everything else off, but we are running that race with Nikki. And that's the way he did things. He worked so hard, not only for Owensboro people, but every racer that ever raced against him, and I saw this today, sent him condolences to the family because they just couldn't believe that something had happened to Nikki. Because he's such an athlete and he stayed so trim and working and staying fit and doing his thing because his thing was riding the motorcycle and being best in the world and always remember if you're going to be the best by golly you better be able to beat the best and Nikki Hayden beat them all ladies and gentlemen beat them all and I know the band you guys got something going I don't know uh, are we okay on time couple minutes you okay all right what I was going to get at is I've got some questions for you folks now number one I've got three questions number one how in the world can a guy ride a motorcycle fall off of it at 210 mile an hour slide from here halfway to the Whitesville water tire and get up and be interviewed by a television guy He's awesome. He, I'll guarantee you that, buddy. I, I tried to, and I was shaking when I was interviewing him. Man, you okay? Oh, yeah, we're going to find you everything. We're going to go back and do this, that, and the other. So that's how you can do it, okay? 210 mile an hour, falls off your scooter, gets up, and that's it. Next question. Who's his barber? Have y'all ever noticed his hair? When you pull, that could be it. When, you, when he pulls that awry helmet off, you have no idea what you're going to see as far as a haircut, right? I mean, it could, I don't know what to tell you, okay? And here's the funny thing that I found out. This Catholic by faith goes to church. That's one thing I really liked about Earl and Rose. Every time everybody was in town, they all went to church. But the priest noticed something was going on in church one day. Not the one that's there now. I'm going to take him out of the mix see, so he's not going to get in trouble. But all of a sudden, when the church is going on, they notice this. What were they looking at? About 10 people in the choir, if you will, had their little game sets going on live TV coverage from MotoGT racing around the world and they're looking at cameras and this one little lady in the back of the church, they said they're scared to death that she's going to throw her hands up in the air like she's on a Harley and she's going to start riding that thing too because all of them are leaning to the left. Yeah, okay, I got that. I'll go back to the right now. I'm going to go again. And the priest, he doesn't know what's going on. So they come up and they take communion. This one young man has earbuds in, and he's listening to the race. So Padre spots this kid and pulls one of the earbuds out. Oh, Hayden's third after two laps. Puts it back in his ear and goes right on with his, okay. So even the good Lord, I think, was on Nicky's side. I know he is right now because, uh, like I say, being a Christian man like he, he is, he was, uh, there is one thing that we can do for that family, uh, and that is every one of us to pray for them. You're looking at Earl, you're looking at Rose, and you do this on your time when you're comfortable in your way. You got Earl. Earl's in the hospital, by the way, right now. I don't know if people wear that. You got Rose. She's got the burden of the world on her shoulder. You got Jenny. She's in town. Tommy, the oldest son, he's working with Mom. Of course, we've got Nicky to think about and his soul. Roger Lee, always nicknamed him Stagger Lee. I thought that would be a good racing name. 
Then they got Kathleen. She runs uh, the automotive, uh, what is it, Third Chance Automotive down here. And Jacqueline Marlin. There's Tommy's girlfriend, excuse me, Nikki's girlfriend. And I would love to meet her. And I would love for you all to meet her to let her know where Nikki came from. Because this is it. It was, it, it, is this fiance? Okay. That's even better girlfriend. She is, is she here? Now you know everything in the world except, okay. But anyway, if you see somebody that you're not familiar with, like I say, there's a lot of very influential people here tonight. I'm gonna get off the stage so these guys and gals can get back and rock you. And that gets back to something else. Did anybody remember that dance that he did? It looked like he was backing away from snakes or something. You remember that? He's going, woo, like that. And I, wait a minute, I got a man that can do that for me right here. Come here, son. Get up. You're going in. Give me a little bit, little, little, little Nicky. Come on, let's go. Let's get going. Little Nicky action. Huh? Huh? No, 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 no. You can do this. Huh? Get down. Let's go. One, two, three. No, now we go back to two. All right, well, listen. I had 15 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to everybody. I hope we can get around and visit with people. But keep the Hayden family in your prayers, in your thoughts. Uh, the official word will be coming as to what's going to happen next. This is not an official event from the Hayden family, by the way. I want you to know that. But they will release when they can, and when they do, then will everybody go that direction. But they're working on a lot, a lot of problems getting uh, Nikki out of a foreign country and, and back into it on American soil. Okay, but um, we said a while ago, we said to you veterans, we said guys, we appreciate what you've done, and ladies too. I want to vouch for that also. But right now, I want to get the band members. Where are the band members? To start heading this way. Oh no, we got, yeah, we're gonna do this. Now, Kirk Kirkpatrick learned how to count backwards from ten when he was nine years old. Kirk, this is it. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back over to this young man. Thank you all for everything. It's great. It's great to be from Owensboro. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Hey, and uh, Jeff, uh, David Green. Mark Green and Jeff Green told me to be sure to tell everybody hello. They said that everybody was sitting around uh, all the pits today in the stalls at Charlotte talking about Nikki Hayden. Wow, isn't that awesome? They had a motorcycle ride today that's 69 miles long. They were going to have 100. They had 300 show up. That's awesome. But racers are unique. Racers will never say, I'll see you again. Take care. Big round of applause for Army Armstrong, guys. Hey, I don't, I don't know about you all, but I'm proud of my small town, USA. What about y'all? You know, Nikki never did not have a smile on his face, right? At least that's what all the pictures look like. Hey, we want to pay respect to Nikki. Every person that's fought for our freedom. We're gonna have a, a balloon release in memory of those folks. If you could just uh, bow your head for a moment of silence while those drift off. Go ahead, guys. Amen. Army talked for a little while. They ran out of helium. <laughs> All, right. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, uh, thank you for that real quick. Hey, now, I know we got everybody in close. We got a hula hoop contest we got to put on. We, we got to get back to the party, okay? Let's celebrate those freedoms we got. Hula hoopers make it to the stage. Don't push. Be nice. Get out of here, woman.